Good morning and welcome to our service. I'm Geoffrey Clark and I'm a worship leader in the Methodist Church. So welcome to this service, whether you're watching it live or recorded. One of the things about services these days on the internet is that you have to be careful about copyright of things. And so the choice of hymns is possibly not as wide and as great as it would be if you were in a church. So I would like to start this morning with a reading the words of a hymn from Fred Pratt Green. The, this particular hymn, I couldn't find a copyrighted version that I could use. God in his love for us lent us this planet. He gave it a purpose in time and in space, small as a spark from the fire of creation, cradle of life and the home of our race. Thanks be to God for its beauty, bounty and beauty, life that sustains us in body and mind, Plenty for all if we learn how to share it. Riches undreamed of to fathom and find. Long have our human wars ruined its harvest. Long has earth bowed to the terror of force. Long have we wasted what others have needed. Poisoned the fountain of life at its source. And I will read the last verse at the end of the service. But we'll start by singing that well-known old hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. And after the hymn, Carol will bring us the gospel reading.
The first reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, from the New International Version. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the word of the Lord. Our next hymn echoes the words of that reading. You're the word of God the Father. star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand all creation holds together by the power of your voice let the skies declare your glory let the land and seas rejoice you're the author of creation you're the To seek and save the lost And exchange the joy of heaven For the anguish of a cross With a prayer you fed the hungry With a word you still the sea Yet how silently you suffered That the guilty may go free You're the author you're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the lands With a shout you rose victorious Wrestling victory from the grave And descended into heaven in your way Now you stand before the Father interceding for your own From each tribe and tongue and nation You are leading sinners home You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across Did you notice that during lockdown, nature just carried on as if nothing had happened? It didn't stop for lockdown. It didn't go on furlough. It just carried on and on. If you were able, did you go out walking more, especially into the countryside? And bliss because of the lack of traffic and out of our cars, we were able to hear see and smell the wonders of nature that surround us. We are so blessed 
with some very beautiful countryside and seashores, rugged Dartmoor, rolling hills, lush green meadows, fields full of crops, hedgerows covered in flowers, streams and rivers, rugged coastlines and sheltered bays with beaches and rock pools. Normally, we're so busy rushing around in our cars, we are too busy watching the road and the other traffic to hear, see and smell the beauty of God's creation. And with that in mind, you might like to just listen and or join in with our next hymn, For the Fruit of All Creation. And after this hymn, we will have our Old Testament reading. Oh, the fruits of all creation, thanks be to God. All his gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. All the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping. Future needs in earth safekeeping, thanks be to God. In the just reward of labour, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbour, God's will is done. In our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvest we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvests of the Spirit, Thanks be to God. All the good we all inherit. Thanks be to God. All the wonders that astound us. For the truths that still confound us. Most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. The second the second reading is taken from Psalm. 148. A call for the universe to praise God. <clears throat> and comes from the Good News translation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven, you that live in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels, all his heavenly armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters above the sky. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. He commanded and they were created. By his command, they were fixed in their places forever and they cannot disobey. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, strong winds that obey his command. Praise him, hills and mountains, fruit trees and forests, all animals tame and wild, reptiles and birds. Praise him, kings and all peoples, princes and all other rulers, young women and young men, old people and children too. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. His name is greater than all others. His glory is above earth and heaven. 
He made his nation strong so that all his people praise him. The people of Israel so dear to him. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Our God and our gracious Heavenly Father, you've given us so much. You care for us. You provide for us. And yet we still turn our back on you. We still don't do the things you would like us to do. We don't care for each other as you would have us care for each other. We forget and we do things which we regret. And we know we do things which don't please you. And at this time, we would ask you to forgive us for what we do that is not acceptable to you. That we would you would help us lead lives that are glorifying to you, that other people might see you in what we think and say and do. We thank you for this beautiful world that you've given us, for the plants and the trees and the creatures that live on it. Help us to look after it and care for it in a way that ensures everyone has enough to eat, enough to drink. Help us to see you in everything, in the people we meet, in the places that we go. Help us to follow you, for we ask it in your son's name. Amen. Our next hymn tells us just what a wondrous God we have, and it's Behold Our God.
his hands Bearing all the guilt of sinful man God eternal, humble to the grave Jesus Savior is in now to While I was sat preparing for this service, I was looking out of the window at a big old pine tree. It lost the top 15 to 20 feet of its trunk about four years ago, but it's still very imposing. The branches are gently swaying, covered in silvery green needles. You might see them differently to me as I'm slightly red-green colour deficient. Not good for preparing colourful PowerPoint presentations. Fortunately for me, my wife is good at sorting out pictures and enjoys doing it. She also keeps me on the right path colour-wise. But I digress. Back to the tree. There are also a wide variety of other trees in the garden of different shapes and sizes, covered in leaves of so many different shades of green. I could spend hours just looking at the trees and admiring the splendour of God's handiwork, not just in this country, but around the world. Ah, but it's not just the trees, but the flowers and all the varieties of creatures as well. The stunning scenery that goes with them. But it's when we look at the scenery and the landscape carefully that the picture changes. It is then that we start to see the damage we've done to this beautiful, fragile earth, scarred for life and eternity. Nature and creation are so precious, and we don't know how long it will last. As we spoil God's wonderful creation for us, by our wanton greed and ruthless exploitation of the earth's resources, without any thought of what is to come or what sort of world will be left for our children or our children's children or our children's children's children. As we sing again, our next hymn speaks about opening our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. And the hymn is Speak, O Lord.
let's stop and have a look at the Bible for a minute. It's strange. Chapter one of the book of Genesis is all about God's wonderful creation. Chapter two is all about Adam and Eve. And then by chapter three, they're thrown out of the Garden of Eden. Then it's the first murder in chapter four. By chapter six, God was regretting that he had made humans on the earth. His heart was broken and he was talking about wiping humans off the face of the earth. The reason was the great wickedness and the evil thoughts of the human race, hence the flood. So ever since the beginning of time, God has had a problem with man. In the Old Testament, God tried all sorts of things to get the Israelite nation to follow him and obey his laws and commandments. But it always only seemed to work for a very short space of time. And then off they went again, worshipping idols and making sacrifices to other gods. To me, this makes the events of Easter even more amazing. That the God who created this planet just for us should not only keep on putting up with our continuing wickedness, but still love us and care enough for us to provide a way of reconciling our relationship with him. And at such a horrendous cost to himself and us and his son. Our next hymn tells of that price and of that love. See those hands.
Now we'll have our prayers of intercession. There is a response to our prayers of intercession this morning, which is on the screen. Loving God of all creation, hear our prayer. Let us quieten our hearts and minds as we unite in prayer. Loving God of all creation, we see your loving godness through everything you have made. Let us give thanks for the beauty of creation and for the world around us, not as a resource to dominate and exploit, but as a gift to be cherished by all nations, all generations. We give thanks for the power of the fresh air, sun, rain and clean water that we all take for granted which gives us new growth for what is sown and reaped, so there is food for all. Make us aware, we pray, of all those countries who do not have the rain and clean water, who suffer from droughts and famines, the forests that have been devastated by greed and with no thought to the impact on the animals and creatures who rely on them for their habitat. We pray that the leaders of these countries see the error of their ways in allowing this to continue and how it will impact on future generations and climate change. We pray that a better way can be found to cut down the amount of plastics polluting our seas and destroying our marine life. We pray for all those who suffer as a result of our waste greed and indifference, and that we learn to care, share and respect all living things in this world of ours. That the day would come when everyone has enough food and clean water. We pray that God may open our eyes so we may recognise his creation and help us to do what we can to restore and care for the wonderful gift that we have been given. Loving God of all creation, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the peace in the world, for an end to conflict and war, for an end to devastation to life and those who live in fear, not knowing what the future may hold. At this time, we pray for the people of Ukraine who have lost families, friends, the many innocent children, as well as their homes and towns that have been destroyed by constant bombing. We hear of those trying to survive without food or water. We pray that the humanitarian corridors will be established and their needs met. Loving God, you ask us to pray for our enemies, which at times is very hard. We ask, you to hear, we ask you to hear us as we pray for Vladimir Putin, that he may see the error of his ways, not only for the people and troops of Ukraine, but also for the people and the troops of Russia before many more lives are lost. We pray that there will be an end to this war. Bring comfort to all in need 
especially the refugees and those who are fleeing from war, not only in Ukraine, but from other war and torn countries. Loving God of all creation, hear our prayer. Loving God at a time when many people are experiencing economic hardship in our own country, we pray that they will find compassion through the generosity and care of others, especially from those in government. We pray for all whom we know in our community and churches who are sick and in constant pain with the many who are suffering from COVID, who have mobility problems, and for those who often feel alone and forgotten. May your presence be felt by them in their time of need. Loving God, who lift up to you those who are grieving for the loss of a loved one, may they know your nearness and love at this time. We will now have a time of silent prayer, naming in our hearts those known to us in need of your tender touch. Loving God of all creation, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the church that it may be a light of hope throughout the world, reminding us all of our responsibilities to care and protect God's precious gift of creation. Loving God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen thank you for those prayers betty so talking of easter which has just gone and the memories of overindulgence of chocolate possibly are out of the way. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about the story of Jesus's life? God foretells what would happen to Jesus, how he would suffer, and that was borne out at our Good Friday reflection. But wait, stop, pause, slow down, Take a deep breath and rewind. Can you imagine for one moment if one of the Old Testament prophets had told the complete story of how their Messiah, the saviour of the Jewish nation, the King of Kings, would be born as an illegitimate baby in a stable, then forced into exile, then when he finally starts out on his journey, he'd be mocked and persecuted by the religious leaders of the day, exchanged for a thief, and then finally nailed to a wooden cross and killed. Some messiah, some saviour, some king, people would say. The Jews just wanted an earthly ruler to make their lives easier to throw off the yoke of Rome. They didn't give a thought to the gulf that had formed, that had been formed by all our wickedness, evil thoughts and deeds between us and God. 
They thought being God's chosen race was enough. Little did they know. They were so full of themselves and their own suffering. They didn't give a thought to anyone else. They just wanted to be the number one nation. That's the trouble. We all want the things of this world, but God wants the things of his heavenly spiritual world for us, which are so much better. Let me ask you a question. Which do you want? The things of this world or the things of God's world? Which would you rather have? In our final hymn, it asks God to take control of our lives. And the hymn is, Be Thou My Vision. service with that last verse of that Fred Platt Green hymn. Earth is the Lord's. It's ours to enjoy it. Ours as God's stewards to farm and defend. 
from its pollution, misuse and destruction. Good Lord, deliver us, world without end. And we'll end our service with a Celtic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine on your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. The service came from Teambridge Methodist Circuit, whether you watched it online or in, present, in person, may we wish you a blessing. If you wish to contact us, there's an email address on this slide. Goodbye and God bless.